Hey guys, welcome to my review of Psycho Pass. To start things off, I would like to say that I love Psycho Pass. Being a show from the year 2012, it could have been just another action anime with a cute main girl and attractive Bishon it has. Which, fortunately, wasn't the case. With how the seasonal anime of summer 2020 is littered with bright and cheery stories, which I also like, mind you, such as Oregairu Season 3, Rent a Girlfriend, and Uzaki-chan, I would like, however, to talk about a show that's objectively a lot different in tone. So today, viewers, I would like to tell you as to why I think Psychopath is worthy of your time. I would like to discuss the show from four categories, which are story, characters, art and sound, and overall enjoyment. I would like to avoid spoilers, so I won't be discussing each of those categories very much in depth. Psychopath's screenplay is written by Gen Urobuchi, who, if you don't know, is famous for writing stories that deal with dark and nihilistic themes. His other famous works are the likes of Fate Zero and Maho Shoujo Madoka Magi. Knowing that, however, even if I highly recommend this series for you to watch, let me clarify that Psychopath is a bloody, violent, and disturbing show, which is why it is not for those with a faint heart and a weak stomach. The plot revolves around a futuristic world dependent on a system created solely to improve the human society called the Sybil System. Through scans done by the system, it determines everyone's place in the society. For those that show signs of being a probable danger to society or latent criminals, will be caught or even disposed of. To put it in simpler terms, if you have dangerous thoughts and it shows through the scan, you will be taken away. With how controlled you are in such society, this begs the question of when your life has been decided by the system for you to act as a model citizen, are you still in control of your own life? Personally, I was compelled by the subplots sprinkled in the story, such as the dystopian futuristic settings, the mysteries of the human psyche, and the thin line between right or wrong. Not to mention, the story puts in social commentaries, such using themes of inequality in the society, and the fear of confronting reality by immersing yourself in a virtual world. For those of you book readers out there, the story also borrows some concepts from famous works such as the science fiction novel Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep by Philip K. Dick to George Orwell's 1984. I don't particularly have a lot of things to say about the cast. There are a number of characters in this show, but I would like to focus on just three of them. First off, Inspector Akane Tsunomori. She is the main character and we, as the viewers, would spend most of our time following her as the story progresses. She serves as the newbie that receives exposition dumps, which helps us as viewers understand the world the story takes place in. For some, her character seems rather naive and idealistic, and that would be a total turn off for some. But I feel like that's to put more emphasis on her group as a character as the story progresses. Second is Shinya Kogami, who is the subordinate of Akane Sudemori and also a latent criminal. With any other detective show in existence, Shinya Kogami is your average strong, badass, grumpy main character of a detective. He is written as a polar opposite of Akane Sudemori in terms of principles such as that of his view in justice and human nature, and that chemistry between the two is the driving force of the show. Lastly would be the main antagonist of the show, Shoko Makishima. I cannot say much about him without actually spoiling the plot, but unlike other one-dimensional characters, he acts as a bright, interesting, and somewhat likable villain, which for those that have watched Death Note can easily compare him to that of Light as a character. The art is okay, for a show released in 2012 it's nothing graphic, but I find the scenery to be very beautiful. Buildings, parks, even lighting is done really great. The animation on the other hand is simply outstanding. Some scenes, such as this, shows just how well the animation is. Props to production IG. 
The sound, however, is maybe my favorite part of the show. Of course, I might be biased here since the opening is from PK, which for those of you that watch Tokyo Ghoul might be familiar with its absolutely iconic opening song, Unravel. And not to mention the ending is from Egoist, which for those of you that might have watched Guilty Crown would attest to how good Egoist is, even though honestly Guilty Crown in and of itself is kind of weird. After recently watching the show again in preparation to writing this review, I find that psychopaths have gone through the test of time and therefore are still worthy of a watch. Of course, as I've mentioned earlier, this show might not be for everyone because of its themes and plots. However, I would likely give this a 3 episode trial for those of you that just want to try it out. If, however, afterwards it is not to your liking, then that's fine. So, if you got through to the end, thanks for watching my first video, I really appreciate it. And if you like what you see, please leave a like and see ya!